Welcome to episode 49. Now, today we decided to just have a little bit of a soul chat. We wanted to talk a little on flow in particular because we're both in massive flow right now. We want to share with you how we've gotten there. We also wanted to share a little bit about our organization and how we both feel organized in what we do. We are both totally different in the way that we schedule our life and our calendars and the methods that we use. So we wanted to share a little bit on that. But more importantly, We really just wanted to empower you guys with knowing that the way that you run your schedule and the way that you run your business really isn't a cookie cutter type of thing. It really is all about what you individually prefer and what works really, really good for you. So this episode is really flowy. We totally just went with the flow with this chat and we really went into depth about what we're up to little side projects that we're doing and just how we're feeling. So I hope it inspires you to get into flow. Don't forget you can check out our website www.babestalkingbusiness.com or you can go over to our Instagram at babestalkingbusiness where we have loads of information including our free side hustle guide that you can download. It's a 40 page guide where we help you not only think about your bright idea idea and a business idea, but we also share some really interesting information that you might not be aware about. So if you're in business or you want to get into business, this guide is going to be amazing for you. It also has 53 different ideas on different types of ways that you can create an income today, as well as some coaching activities to help you get your business up off the ground running. One last thing, if you love this episode, please head over to the iTunes app and give us a five-star review. Don't forget, we're also on Spotify and Stitcher. So if you would love to listen to this, please, please head over to whichever app you're using. Give us a five-star review if you really love it. Share it with someone you love that you feel like will really benefit from this episode. It really helps to support our channel. And also, we do a shout-out of the week. So please leave your Instagram handle if you do give us a review so we can tag you on our Instagram. So without further ado, we're so excited for you to get into flow. Okay, well, we've been trying to start this podcast for about an hour now. <laughs> we have a cute distraction. <laughs> so we, we, thought, we thought maybe this week, we, there's been a while since we've done just a podcast with just you and I. Yeah. Maybe we could do a bit of a life update, talk about what's been going on. Yeah, there's lots going on. What's and going? we have Friday wines here as well. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Pumba, not for you, baby. So, um, we wanted to talk about seasons. Seasons. Yeah, about calendars, organization, flow mm-hmm. as well. Because you've been in, you've gotten in flow, and I've gotten in flow too. Mm-hmm. And surprisingly, it's happened with things that we didn't think would get us in flow. So maybe we can talk about that. Yeah. So- it's already, I think this is the first episode we're filming for the new financial year. Like we're literally halfway through 2020. I know, and I think weird. I remember us doing the first one of 2020 and talking about the exciting stuff we had planned oh, yes, we did too. before 2020 <laughs> just blew up and we had oh world pandemics and we've had Corona and you had the financial crisis and here we are halfway through the year. We're actually supposed to be in Bali right now too. We are meant to be in Bali at our Babes in Business retreat, which obviously isn't happening this year, which was, again, like so rattling because we had so many girls flying in from all around the world who were so excited for it. And yeah, you just can't control the things that are out of your control, I guess. It's taught me so much about just just making weird noises. (laughs) We're recording a podcast. Can't make those noises. (laughs) <laughs> what has coronavirus taught you in this whole period? What's 2020 taught you so far, Shen? Oh, so much that you need to, I know this is something you want to talk about, relinquish control of the things you can't control. And it's been so good just going with the flow and being like, all right, well, if borders are closed or we can't travel or we need to quarantine or we need to isolate or we need to shift and pivot in leadership and business, then hit me like I'm ready for it. What do I need to do? So I've been reading lots of books and listening to lots of podcasts myself. 
one of my favorites has been um, John Maxwell's Leadership, which a girlfriend of mine in um, Young Living told me to read because I was messaging her and I was like, oh my God, how are you dealing with this? And she was like, honestly, babe, like read this book. It's going to help you. And I did. And yeah, it's just taught me to roll with the waves, I suppose, roll with the punches. And it's the best thing I've done this year. I've, I can honestly say that I'm so grateful for COVID. I am. Maybe it's the introvert in me saying that though. Yeah. It's, I think it's been a running theme for a while now like I'm a human doing like I'm always running a million miles per hour and even when I'm supposed to slow down I find a way not to and I think that's what coronavirus has taught me wouldn't teach me actually forced me on my arms yeah like we had before the year it even started I kind of felt like I had 2020 all scheduled out like we started the year in Bali we're yeah. supposed to be in the UK a month after that we're supposed to be in the Amalfi Coast for our honeymoon we're supposed to be in Bali now again we're going mm. to Vegas for only Sri Lanka at the end of the year like my whole year was planned out before 2020 even started. And it's like, Corona's like, you know what? Let's <laughs> just cancel everything. Oh, wow. Here's all your work <laughs> space. You're actually going to do nothing and sit on your ass. And I can tell that something was shifting because I was actually really relieved once all my travel plans got canceled, canceled. which is weird for me because I love travel. I was yeah. actually just really grateful. That I'm like, you know what? I don't have to come up with an excuse. I can actually yeah. sit at home this year. And do nothing and do nothing which manifested a puppy instead so i love 2020 well you guys haven't met my puppy hozzy no. she's five months old and pumba is 12 weeks old and they're both french bulldogs and they're best friends they're so cute see when um we got you guys know we got married in um december it was actually part of my wedding vow so i couldn't wait until dan would let me have a pug or a french bulldog and so <laughs> considering all he was always like no like we're always traveling and we're always like we've got both our family live pretty far away but then this year i was like babe <laughs> let's have kids he's like nope it's like we're not traveling so can i get a dog <laughs> so I, think, I think the dog was like the less evil of the two so i got my dog <laughs> well let's talk about what the dogs have taught us because it has taught me so much having uh, a fur baby mm. because we are habitual hustlers Let's face it, we always have been for the last four and a half years. And so um, I know for me personally, like one of my big things I've always wanted to tap into is flow. Like how can I be in flow? How can I do less and earn more? And the whole concept around that, I mean, I wrote a blog on it when I finally started tapping into it because I was like, wow, you can actually do less and serve more people at the same time and earn more. But the whole concept was so foreign to me because I spent so many years hustling that then this puppy comes into my life and all of a sudden all of the hustle sort of flies out the window. <laughs> like literally you cannot get any work done when you have a puppy. It's kind of like when you have a baby, I guess. <laughs> when you're telling me, because Shang got fuzzy, we'll probably get them at the same time, but then I ended up not getting my litter. My puppy wasn't ready. So I got to see Shen do everything before me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm so excited for a puppy. And then she's like, no, Lauren, like get everything you need done before Pumba <laughs> arrives. Like everything. I mean, everything. I was like, what do you mean? And then literally, yeah, the last month, I'm grateful that I did get like finish all my work projects because you've got to watch them. If you're not watching them, they're pissing and they're shitting everywhere. And if they're not pissing and shitting, I'm trying to crate train Pumba. So I put her in the crate and she cries. So I'm not picking her up. Then there was like all these nights that she wouldn't sleep. Aww. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Like, I think I bit off way more than I can show. I didn't realize it was going to be so full on. It is full on. And I was like, Holy shit. Maybe I'm not ready to be an actual mom to a human baby yet. <laughs> that was what I've realized. <laughs> so holding off. We're holding off. <laughs> Pumba's met my um my maternal needs right now. <laughs> Giving her all the mothery love she needs. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm so grateful for Hazi because yeah, she well, first of all, the first two months have been so cool because yeah, I had to spend so much of my time focusing on her, toilet training her and it must be like the love they talk about when you have kids. Like, obviously, we both don't have kids yet, but I've always heard about this love that you feel for your kids that is just, like, undescribable. And I feel like I have that with my dog. Like, it's like you're about to cry. <laughs> I love my dog this much. I love my dog so much. Like, we went, 
we did a breathwork class on Sunday, which was amazing. And we were gone for six hours. It was the most we've been away from Hozzy since we got her. And I literally in the car, I was so excited. It was like, I can't wait to see my dog. And that's not me. And so I spent the whole first two months like hanging out in the sun with her, barefoot in the grass, like grounding myself, earthing, playing with her. And I didn't expect that. I just thought I was going to hustle my way through, like work, 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 just like I normally do, get my stuff done. And it was just a really pleasant surprise. And I like feel, felt like I tapped into this whole new world of, oh my gosh, I actually don't have to do all that stuff on my to-do list. I can enjoy life. I can enjoy the sun. I can sit out in nature. I can play with my dog and I can still get like all my stuff done. But that, I don't know if this is even making sense. It but. does. It does. And I think until you're in it and you're navigating it yourself, it might sound a bit foreign, but I think most of our listeners yeah. have been there or are trying to get their We're experience get moments or chapters of flow in their life. Yeah. Because, yeah, like we are saying, it's it's really interesting. I am like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a doer, but I'm also very logical. Like, Shen will vouch this. I'm always trying to work things out. Like, I'm not so much analyzing things, but I just, I like understanding how people think. So when it comes to flow... I know a lot of the research and science behind flow. Like I'm trying to rationalize it and understand it yeah. rather than just experience it. Yeah. And so like a big thing for me, even in psychology, like I do a masterclass of like all this stuff that we've done from the HS Emporium. It's like talking about, yeah, like flow. But for, for me to actually experience it, it's been, I don't know how to explain it. It's such an interesting experience because I fell into flow when I wrote my book. Mm-hmm. I'd never, I've experienced it in little bits, like when I run and when I do yoga, but I hadn't actually been in a prolonged period of just feeling so in flow. Yeah. And then when I finished writing, I don't know if this is going to make sense either, but I kind of felt really lost. I was like, now what? Yeah. Like, what's my muse? Like what, where, where's, and for like the last six months I've been chasing some sort of creativity or inspiration or just something like I felt empty. I was like, now yeah. that this thing that was tugging at me for so long, I'm going to pull this changing laps. Okay. Tugging at me for so long has finished. Yeah, I think I've spent the last six months trying to find it. So I think Pumba came at a really cool time, which is yeah. made me sit on my ass. And um, yeah, I think it's probably only been within the last couple of weeks I've come into flow again. But it's been a long time feeling kind of lost. And hopefully there's people listening to this. Maybe you're in COVID and you're in a similar situation where you're like, okay, what's next? Like maybe you feel like, something's brewing but you don't know what it is or you're not sure where you should be investing your focus like yeah i've been there yeah it's not always we're not always in flow we're not always achieving we're not always confident no sometimes it's just leaning into that uncomfort and really trying to tune into okay well what feels good or what do i do next yeah well if i look back at the last four and a half years and i say that the last four and a half years because that's when i started my network marketing business and really just went all gung-ho I, there have been seasons of hustle, but there's also been seasons of flow, like purposely slowing down and intuitively I've chosen those times just when it feels right. Like when it feels right to go all in, like I go all in, but I've always listened to my gut and just thought, right, well, I'm just not feeling it right now. It doesn't mean I need to quit or it doesn't mean I need to take a step back. It just means I need to feel good and figure out what it is that feels good. And so, yeah, there's been like really cool side projects happen in those times Like you were saying, like when you were writing your book, like it was just downloading. Like it was like it's coming out of like this magical place <laughs> from space. And I feel like when we tap into flow and we allow it, we don't resist it. Like some really epic shit can come from that. Mm. So, so true. Okay, you guys, we are going to take a short little break from this podcast episode so we can share with you about one of our incredible partners that we love so much, and that is the Health Style Emporium. It is an online holistic health program designed for women to help women meet their most inspired self. Now, what we love about this program the most, it is so holistic, meaning that it 
delves into the depths of all the areas of health. Think about all the health pillars in our lives. We not only have nutrition and how we nourish ourselves, the movement aspect of our health, you know, how we're exercising and moving our bodies, but there's so much more to health than the eye meets. You know, we have what fulfills you, what fills your cup up, what do you love to do, your relationships, your home environment, your career. There are so many things in our life that contribute to our overall well-being and the HSC does exactly that. Now, the most beautiful thing about the program is that it's all educational based, meaning that you're not going to be given a meal plan and not told why we're eating like that. What I love about the program is that you're educated along the way on all types of things like gut health, hormones, breath work, manifesting with the moon, you know, coaching you through your breakthrough, finding your happiness. So, so many things. Now, the really cool thing is on the 15th of August, the HSC is actually hosting a six-week mini program slash challenge called the COVID Glow Up, which we're personally really excited to take part in because let's face it, COVID has made us couch slobs. So with the COVID Glow Up, you are going to have a Monday motivation every day, tea time Tuesday, workout Wednesday, thoughtful Thursday, Facebook Live Friday, smoothie Saturdays, and self-care Sunday. Every single day has a theme for six weeks, which we're so, so excited about. So if you would love more information about the COVID glow up and how you can be a part of it, please head over to the website www.thehsc.net to have more information about the program itself. You can also head over to the Instagram page at the HSC official. And if you're looking for a coach to take part in the program with, head over to Instagram and search the hashtag the HSC coach. That's the HSE coach, C-O-A-C-H. That is how you can find a coach, a part of the HSC to link arms with to help you along your journey. Yes, you also get your own cheerleader. Okay, guys, that is all about the HSC, one of our beautiful partners. Now let's get back to the episode. I was going to say, so when you're talking about, um, when I had my little space out because of Pumba, you're talking about flow and like there's been periods where you've hustled and not the last four years have been hustled or yeah. it feels like it, but there hasn't. No. What I had a realization this week, I think it was a breakthrough because I'm doing my little own surrender project right now and I'm like journaling and documenting it. it. Sounds really weird, but me slowing down is like an active, it's a challenge for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm documenting it. <laughs> but um, what I realized was the last four years, yes, I've hustled. Like, I don't think there's another word for it. I have hustled, but it, I've actually, I, was, I was in flow when I was hustling. It's not like I was yeah. hustling because I felt like I had to. It wasn't hustling because it was a chore. It wasn't a hustle, hustling because it was an obligation. At that point in my life or that chapter in my business, hustle is what felt I felt most in flow when I was hustling. Yeah. And I think when you get to a certain point, it's, flow doesn't mean that you're doing nothing on your ass either. I think some people have this misconception around flow. You could be doing lots, but it's with ease and with grace. Yeah. Because, yeah, I think when I look back, I'm like, yeah, the last four years of hustle, but it hasn't been like hustling hard work. I felt so aligned and excited and in, in love with what we do in the mm-hmm. network marketing profession. But I've got to a certain point in my life and business where right now what I have been doing hasn't felt like flow. So I've had to kind of like pivot and just give myself some extra time to rest. I guess another word for it is inspired action. Yeah. Like, like when you were writing your book or when we're creating a project that is just like, it feels like it's just flowing out of you. Like, you know, like that emoji with like the rainbow that's coming out of your mouth. It's just, I don't that's, think that's what, not an emoji though, is it? You I, can't get it on your phone. It must be something you can Google. I, I think know. I've seen the picture, but it's not on my phone. Maybe it's a filter on Instagram or something. <laughs> it is. It's not. It's, anyway, it's <laughs> not, that's what I feel like flow is. Like when you're just like... Bobbing rainbows? Yes. It's just coming out of you. So it doesn't necessarily mean you're doing nothing. It just means that you're inspired by the action that you're doing. It just feels good. It doesn't feel like resistance or it doesn't feel like a grind and... Like, admittedly, there have been times in the last four and a half years where I have, like, forced the hustle because it's been a season of, like, you know, I've made an intention of, like, okay, well, this month I want to create this in my business. So I 
we'll do it for the next few weeks and then you go back into flow and it's kind of like just up and down yeah seasons seasons, seasons you like to call them mm. and so what we're talking early say about something that i think something with not you don't ever master something but something that we do and a good at is still even no matter what season we're in having a schedule or having a plan and now we're talking about some of the girls on my team just don't have any structure to their business or day so yeah maybe talk into that what what were you thinking or what made you think of that early say before we started recording well I was having a conversation with someone who I work really closely with I love her so much she was so just frazzled she was just like you know I'm ready for that next level of growth in my business but I can't even handle what I've got now how am I meant to grow and so we kind of dived into like okay well what's happening for you in your life right now like where do you feel like you're strong where do you feel like your weaknesses are we kind of did like a SWOT analysis and what came up for her was that she's just not organized she just doesn't have a I guess like a schedule or a calendar and that made me think well I asked you I was like do you run your life by a calendar because I do I use iCal I am obsessed with it and like if I don't put lunch break into my calendar I'll forget to do it so the way that I've set up my calendar is that it's set on default I went into the settings of my Mac and just the default is it pings at me every time something new is happening in five minutes sometime so I've done that because I'm obviously working on my computer all day, every day. And so it sounds kind of crazy, but sometimes I'm so much in flow and I'm just doing a task or an activity that I forget the world exists and I forget to pee, I forget to eat. <laughs> so I literally have to put those like white spaces into my calendar. I need to put lunch in there, but that's just me. That's like that's my personality and I, I, understand that not everyone needs that so that prompted me to ask you like how do you run yours and you obviously run yours out of a paper diary it's so different I think um every three to six months I kind of change my calendar or my schedule because I get bored I think that's what really intrigued me about the network marketing profession and building a profession within that or career within that was that you got to design your own days yeah and so I feel like every three months I kind of go through like I've got a new passion project, I've got something new or I'm doing a new thing for fitness. Like for a period I was doing yoga classes and then I was doing the gym and then I was doing um, bar classes and the timetable changes. So every three months I kind of go through a new phase. Where I'm like, what do I want my days to look like? And yeah. in summer I want to start a little bit later because I want the summer sun. In winters I don't mind starting work earlier and having a break midday because I want to my, I want my you hear us snoring. <laughs> I want my work schedule to be around when it's the hottest. Yeah. But so yeah, every three months I kind of look at what I want my day to look like. And I think once upon a time, when we started the business, or when I first went full time, I did what you did. I think you taught me, and I had a iCal where I had color coded, and I was like, okay, this bits for when I work on my business. This bits where I'm available to help my girls and mentoring in business. This bits for creation. Um, and then. I, I think even that made me feel suffocated because I kind of just want to do what I feel like doing yeah. and that was too much structure. So then what I did is I just, I just made myself available for my team between one and six o'clock, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. So in my um, acuity, how do I say you it? You said it right. Did I? Acuity? Yeah. Loz always says equity. I'm like, it's <laughs> acuity. <laughs> in my acuity schedule, which is where my team book calls with me or potentials, that's kind of my calendar. So I just look, I know between 12 and one o'clock when I wake up at one o'clock in the afternoon, I can work on my business. I can be creative. I can fill up my cup. I can do, if I'm writing, I'm writing, but then really my calendar is my boss. Whatever's on my calendar between one and six is where I've got yeah. to be or what I've got to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm much the same. Like I actually learned this from Brendan Bouchard, his podcast. I remember listening to him saying like, your like big tasks like your your tasks that really use your brain and the things that you need to get done that like your big frogs um you've got to do them in the morning and he was like I strictly don't have meetings after one and I was like wow I really love that and so I'm the same my acuity is open from 1 p.m onwards for my team and for anyone that I'm chatting to about you know joining as a client or joining as a team member but before that I'm doing things that well you know, see, I'm a little bit different here. I change what I do in the morning according to what's happening with the moon because that's just like what I love to study and I love that part of astrology. 
the different energies that get thrown off. I was like, that kind of helps me decide what I'm going to do that morning. So that does change every day. But I know that from when I wake up to at least well, 12 o'clock, so I'll have a lunch break in the middle of the day. Yeah, it's just flow time. Like, it's the things that light me up and things that feel good. Yeah, and you mentioned about my diary because for me, I'll pick it up. I've got so much shit in it so I could show you guys, but I have a paper diary. And if I lost that, I actually think I would die. <laughs> like, I don't know how to function without that. But when you talk about big rocks, so even I think I've read a few times that like you want to get your big rocks done in the morning. So if I've got things like I always ask myself what's one thing I can do today that's going to get me closer to my next goal I'll always write it down in my paper diary so it's always I look at that and there'll be a few things I've got to get done and that gets done before like 12 o'clock yeah. but that's how my paper diary works like all the little niggly things that I see your eye all these shit that pops up on your computer Does that annoy you? oh my gosh but I see that if, that works for me but all that would just be on that piece of paper so it's we're still doing it the kind of same yeah, way I, different. I put on paper and you have notifications going ding shen it's qualifiers day two today <laughs> yeah so i if if my computer doesn't remind me about something i like see you later like if we had a dinner and I didn't put it in my calendar, I will forget that we have a dinner date. Like that's, but that also comes down to the fact that I'm like a dory fish and have no memory because I'm thinking about so many other things. My brain space is just taken up by so many other things, but that's, yes, I run my life by my calendar. If someone stole my Mac or my calendar decided to shit itself, I would die. <laughs> I actually think once upon a time I took my diary because I wrote my shopping list in my diary once. I remember when I used to work in my job and I brought my diary to the grocery store to do my groceries and oh, I left no. my diary in the trolley. Oh no. An hour later I realized and I went back like in hysterics and they found my diary. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, there is a God. <laughs> so yeah, I guess the message here is find a way that works, works for, you. for you. Like, yeah, it took me it really took me like two years to figure out my calendar. Like the calendar is how I function. And it was just from research of just listening to other inspiring people, like how they ran their day, their day. And yeah, I think, so you can have a paper diary, you can have a digital calendar. Um, what else can you do? You could just totally like wing it. Do you remember there was a period where you were winging it? Oh my God. I remember when we first started the podcast, you know, I'm doing this thing where I don't write down lists. Yeah. I don't write down anything (laughs) because the coach that you're working with is telling you to do this. I'm giving it a go. I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounds is bad. Stressful. It was so bad. I'm like, how do you remember? I'm not writing lists. And it was just for your wedding too. And you weren't writing lists. I remember. Okay. So I'll explain this. (laughs) The coach that I was working with at the time was like, I don't believe in lists you shouldn't do that to yourself it's like punishment so don't do a list just wake up and like whatever your memory remembers to do like just do it so I was like wow I really love this strategy like let's try it did not work for me I was like I don't remember what I need to do I'm just going to go to the beach (laughs) oh my gosh that would stress me out yeah it didn't work for me, but it works for some people. some people. And it works for him. Like he has a very successful business, multiple seven-figure business, and he does not write lists. So I think if you're taking anything from today's episode, other than just hearing us ramble about our life updates, <laughs> it's knowing that you can be in you can still be achieving in flow yes. and being productive in flow. And no matter what season of life we're in, Shannon and I still have structure to our day even flowing there's structure there's intention there's projects mm-hmm. um and especially if you're running a business and you have a team you're gonna have to have some kind of structure and flow yeah i hate to say it but i don't know many or any actually successful entrepreneurs who i would that i look up to and would want to emulate who don't have some type of structure i don't know anyone no, me either. Mm. But actually, I was having a conversation with someone the other day who was like, okay, so sometimes I feel good and sometimes I feel like I don't want to do anything. Um, and she was asking me about how, like, how to run her week with that, sort of like, like intuitively figuring out her energy. And 
I would highly recommend using, um, I don't know where I got it from, but there is a, a tracker, like a tracker that you can, uh, even just do it in your journal, just track like how you feel that day every day and see if you can find a pattern to when you feel good, when you feel bad or not bad, I don't want to use the word bad. The word is uninspired. Inspired. When, in a funk. In a funk. Yeah. And don't resist. Like if I've learned anything, are you looking at that weird notification? Yes. It's the Mercury retrograde. I swear, I've tried doing that. <laughs> There's this weird notification coming up on my computer that wants my password and... <laughs> and take all your details and run off with your life. Yes. This is what I mean. Just flow with the notification. Okay. There's a notification there. Sorry, you were talking about... So <laughs> different energies. Yes. So not resisting. So like a perfect example is... On Wednesday this week, sorry, Tuesday and Wednesday this week, I just couldn't do my inbox. I couldn't. Like, I looked at my inbox, my emails. I was like, there are so many emails in there and I'm just not feeling inspired to do that right now. And so I just didn't. But I woke up. You're so naughty. I woke (laughs) up today and I was like, I feel really inspired to reply to every single person in my inbox with a smile on my face. And I know that I wrote back to everyone today with a really good energy. But if I would have forced that on Tuesday when I was just feeling flat and I was forcing it, I know that I wouldn't have been giving everyone my 100%. Yeah. I love that. I think something I've learned on my little surrender project, and I've made a little side note for when I am a a mum to a human baby, is that it's so important to prioritize time for yourself and it's not selfish. Like even though I really got a little fur baby right now, like for the first two weeks, I really didn't do much. Like I was too scared to go out, leave her out of it, like leave her by herself for an hour. But I noticed if I didn't walk or I didn't get outside, I didn't, I wasn't the best me and I couldn't give the best me to my team. So I was agitated in my voice messages. Everything yeah. was pissing me off because I wasn't productive. Yeah. And it makes such a difference. Like I went for a walk this morning in the sunshine, listen to a podcast. I'm like, oh my gosh, how that changed. And nothing actually externally changed, but suddenly my whole outlook changed. I was inspired. I was happy to go through my inbox. Yeah. I think I just realized for when I'm a mom and I hear a lot of moms saying it's so selfish to take time for yourself. I've realized it's going to be a necessity for when I actually have kids, because yeah. like you said, you, if you're in a funk and you're feeling uninspired, that translates to your conversations, mm-hmm. your content. Yeah. Everything you do in business. Yeah. There are seasons. There will be times where it feels good to, you know, sell or make an announcement or pitch something. And then there will be different seasons where it just is going to feel really good to self care and do nothing and talk to no one. And then I'm in that season right now, by the way. (laughs) There will be seasons where you're in creation mode. You're like building sales pages and websites and content and Like that's the, there's different seasons for everything and you just need to tap into what feels good and they can change daily. Like they don't have to necessarily be months on end. Like it could literally be two days that you feel like not talking to anyone. Like that's okay. I go through that and I just listen to how I feel. And the next couple of days I'll feel like a fire energy in me where I'm like, I'm a real doer and I want to do and I'm inspired and I'm creating. And it's kind of how I felt yesterday. Like I created this thing that kind of came out of nowhere. It kind of, I think it came to me in the shower and I was like, Oh my God, it's 9 PM, but I need to go onto my computer and start this and Google it to see if it's like a possibility. Is this the wizard thing? You're a this wizard, Harry? wizard thing. Yeah. Like, we have a little joke that Shani's a wizard. She's Harry Potter. <laughs> like, it's not a joke. It is. I think I'm more like Dumbledore. (laughs) Yes. No, but these like these downloads happen out of nowhere. And like I have a rule that I don't like to work past 7 p.m. because that's my time to eat dinner with Maddie. It's my time to relax and chill out and like maybe read in bed or whatever. But this like the other night, I had a shower so late, it was like 9 p.m. And this download of like an idea came to me and I couldn't help but do it and yeah I wasn't resisting it like I wasn't putting structures and boundaries on that because I just felt good to just like get it out of me and get it on paper so I don't know if this helps anyone but 
It does. I think it really does. I think, and that's what this is about, right? It's having soul chats and letting people kind of hear a little bit more about the stories behind the businesses because yeah, yeah we're all navigating it. And I know most of our listeners are girls. So I feel like this might be too much information, but I also feel like you would get this talking about periods when it's like, you don't feel like doing stuff. Yeah. So I came off the, I got the rod out of my arm this year, right guys? Mm-hmm. Little girls listening. I'm so glad you got that out of your arm. I've got it out, but mm-hmm. it's so funny. Like, you know, you talk about like tuning into patterns and seeing patterns throughout the month. Mm-hmm. I never really had patterns because for the last 10 years I've been on contraception, which is kind of just numbed and suppressed any natural rhythm in my body. But it is hilarious now. My pattern is like clockwork. And I never understood what women said when they just have, they get, like it's, they're getting their periods and they're emotional. I'm like, I'm a girl too. And I'm, I don't get that. Until now I'm uh-huh. natural. <laughs> and I feel like I'm crazy. Like I'll just cry at the drop of like at nothing. Like nothing makes <laughs> sense. I feel like I'm going crazy. I'm so insecure. Like to a point I've never experienced before. And I look at my little period app and I'm like, holy fuck, you sneaky shit. My period yes. comes tomorrow. But it's so weird because it's like clockwork. It and totally I never is. realized like people talk about it, but literally it happens and the day after it like it's every single month for the last six months i'm like whoa you know about seasons of your menstrual cycle right? uh, from the health styling program i know yes oh, yeah. from a beautiful holistic health program but i've never experienced that or had a pattern when i was on contraception yeah. yeah so for those of you who are listening this is really cool and i started tapping into this i was like wow this makes so much sense so when you have your period you are in your winter season which is like slowing down, taking it easy, chilling out. Obviously, like personally, I don't feel like doing anything when I have my period. I'm like, don't talk to me. I just want to eat chocolate. I don't want to exercise. I don't want to see people. (laughs) Then you go through your different seasons throughout the month. And then like when you're ovulating, for example, it's your spring. No, it's your summer when you're ovulating. And so definitely, definitely check this out. There's a webinar in the Health Southern Forum about this actually. And when I learned about it, And really understanding that when I was menstruating, I could chill out. Like if I felt like it, I could. It actually just feels so good just to just relax and not do anything. Mm -hmm. I'm learning. (laughs) I'm so proud. (laughs) I feel like this year has been a year where I've just got, I don't know the right word. I'd call it self-righteousness. I think we all have it to a certain degree, but like this year is my year of just being like, I know nothing, I surrender, and I'm just learning, like I'm leaning in. And it's funny because I feel like even in, just not just in business, but in life, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. Yeah. And it's so funny because I compare my confidence to four years ago when we were babies starting our businesses together. And I look back on our content and our videos. We had no freaking idea, guys. We were ignorance on fire, really but that. we were pure fire. You could yeah. not stop us. Yeah. Our confidence and our conviction, like, we were a force to reckon with. Okay. And it's so funny because you'd think that would just build and build, but I think it's because we were ignorant and I had no, I didn't know any better. And yeah. I feel like the more you learn, the more you listen, the more you realize you don't know. It's, I was so hard and harsh and my energy just got, got softer and softer with each year because I'm just like, all right, well, I'm surrendering. I'm listening. Yeah. Like I'm here to learn. That's interesting leaning into that softer energy this year because it is so uncomfortable and foreign to me. It is for you. I know it is. But you can create so much abundance from tapping into that. You just wait. You just wait. (laughs) End of 2020, even beyond, you'll be like, wow, I've created more in my life, like wealth-wise, and not wealth financially. I mean wealth, like in joy, in love, in happiness, in relationships, in creativity, from slowing down oh my gosh pumba she's a little piglet you can, it's, i told you it's not us breathing if you're listening to the, it's pumba the audio okay. <laughs> you will and you watch you will create so much abundance from slowing down and i think this is a really pivotal time in your life because obviously kids are on the horizon in the next few years like when kids come they're gonna be like pumba <laughs> just sleeping on my lap Pumba's in a good contraception for the time being. I think Dan. <laughs> I think Dan's secretly kind of grateful for her. <laughs> the pressure so was good. definitely on after the wedding. I was like, "All right, let's do it." And now I'm like, mm, "No, I'm okay. Let's just have puppy snuggles." But in saying that, you know what? I actually can't wait to have kids because something shifted in you, though. You've gone from like, "Yeah, yes. I'm not open to it." Just like, "Yeah, you know what? Maybe next year." So funny, like 
for anyone who's had the cute conversation with me for my whole life I've been like nope 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 I'm so strict on this like it's not happening something has definitely shifted in me where I'm very open to the idea now like if like this is how I'll say it if I was to fall pregnant I would be pretty happy like I would be stoked right now so are you trying? Have you not told me? No. I, <laughs> I was like, are you going to announce this on a podcast no, before you tell me? Uh, no, 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 no. No, I would love <laughs> to have kids in a couple. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not putting an easy yeah. on it anymore because this is, the, this is the honest truth. For so long, I have always said to everyone and myself, like, I need to be in a certain financial situation or like uh, in a place in my business where I want to hit like a certain milestone in my business before I have kids and I'm not there yet like the the goal that I had in mind I haven't reached but I don't know there's just something within me that's like is that really important like it's not it's really not so but I'm not trying I promise (laughs) I'll tell you I'll tell you (laughs) We've got a girl on our team who's very spiritual. I think she, I don't know if she labels herself a psychic, Bianca. She's reached out to like three times being like, you're pregnant. I'm like, no, I'm not. She's like, you're about to have a baby. I'm like, no baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's freaking me out. <laughs> Stop it. It's Puma. As I said, I'm like, are you getting fur baby vibes? We're picking up a dog next week. Yeah. There's a little um, 12-week-old French bulldog that you have just – not have to push out, out of my body. vagina. <laughs> <laughs> we were just laughing about that earlier today. Like it's like all the joy of a real baby, but I just don't didn't have to push it out of my vagina. Like why don't all moms do this? It's so good. <laughs> They're pretty special. Look at her. She's just sleeping on my lap right now. Yeah, she makes me very happy. Although she scared me today. She keeps choking on nothing. I don't realize, and she nearly dies, and it gives me a panic attack. I think it's a Frenchy thing. They just inhale their food. In it. Inhalate? 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 <laughs> Inhale? I don't know what word to try to use. They scoff their food down. <laughs> well, oh. this has been a really fun podcast because hopefully you guys can sense that we're in flow right now. Yeah, we definitely are. I know I've started writing again, which has brought like I said, I've been not out of flow, like, but I haven't been inspired. Like I haven't felt creative. I've been waiting for that next thing. And this downloads kind of come through me over the last two weeks. So it just feels good to writing again. Mm. But um, I know you've been in flow for a little bit. Yeah. So I've been creating a little side project, which I'm so excited to, to launch. Um, and yeah, it's crazy. Like I haven't been in this state of flow for such a long time. Like when I started building out my business, I think, yeah, like I said before, I've been in like this crazy download flow for like in seasons, but I'm creating a new project right now that's totally not, has nothing to do with network marketing or what we've created together. And it just feels so good. Like I'm, I'm feeling creative. I'm feeling intelligent. I'm feeling like, I just can't wait to get this little baby out there. It's a project baby. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it just feels really good. And I guess at the end of the day, this is why I said yes to network marketing because I wanted more time freedom to do things that I love. And I think a part of me felt so guilty for so long. I couldn't do another side project because I was like, nope, I've got to put a hundred percent of my time into my network marketing business. But you can, you can, do it all and still have everything and not overwork yourself. Like that's where I'm at right now. I'm not overworking myself. I'm just like, I'm looking after my team. I'm looking after my customers. I'm still building my network marketing business. I'm still recruiting. I'm still bringing on people. But then there's this thing over here that's just like filling my cup up. It's like the medicine that my soul has been asking for. So that's I'm coming soon. soon. I'm excited it's coming for soon. it. I'm so excited. I can definitely <laughs> tell it's something that you're on earth to share and contribute to the world. And I'm really grateful we're touching on this because I know this is something that I personally challenged. I was challenged with a year ago and I think it's a good opportunity and a platform to have a discussion around like, I feel like a lot of people in the network marketing profession, whether it's, whether it's spoken about and 
I don't know if it's something that's spoken about like explicitly or it's just something that's kind of communicated unconsciously, but there's, like you said, there's this guilt of stepping outside of that and having other projects. Cause I think I told yeah. you when I was, I launched my own life and mindset coaching program outside of network marketing. And it's like, I was so scared to take that step. Cause mm. like people within the profession are judging me. Well, and, and, then, and it challenged me. Yeah. Like we had that conversation where I was like, I'm challenged on this. Like, why are you doing like we, yeah, I totally get it. And then I just think if there's someone, if you guys are listening to this, I just hope this gives you hope. Like, like we said, I remember coming back to the reason why I said yes to network marketing in the first place. It was mm. to, we have a very similar why. I was like, I just want more yeah. white space yeah. and time. Yeah. Like I want something that I love and I'm so passionate about what we do and we empower women. I love what we do within our network, our, our, our profession. I also love the company we've aligned ourselves with. But I said yes to this for more white space to do more of things that I love just for passion, like passion yeah. projects. And I think that, like, no, yeah, it's going to take a few years to build your network. If you're in the network marketing profession, it's going to take a while to get your business off the ground where you do have that beautiful income coming in where you can maybe take a step back or take, take, make some extra time for a passion project. But that's okay to don't feel like, I think Marie Folio was when I, I really started being okay with this when she started spreading that message. It's okay to be multifaceted and multi-passionate. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yes, I'm a net, I'm a professional network marketer, but before I joined network marketing, I was also a life coach and I studied psychology and I'm passionate about mental health. And I'm not just going to fit in this box because that's what I feel like I'm supposed to do. Like, yeah, like you've got these beautiful passions and we all do. So I think something I want you to take from this is be all of you. Like, infuse your passions into your network marketing profession if you're in the profession but also be okay to explore that outside the profession as well it doesn't have to be one or the other you can have both yeah yeah i think that's a pretty good place to end this yeah it's getting pretty dark in here too yeah <laughs> we're sipping on some wine so we might start getting slurry so <laughs> But hopefully we, we were talking the other day about how we might try to do a bit more episodes of just us chatting. So yeah. like a lot of people, um, yeah, you hear from our beautiful guests that you don't really get to hear much about what's going on behind the scenes in our business. So we'll try to mm-hmm. just share some more value that's organic and, and relevant yeah. to what we're currently navigating so you can learn through our journey as well. Let us know what you want to hear too. Like we're an open book. Like I love having deep, raw conversations over a red wine and just like spilling it all out on the table and laughing there's nothing that's embarrassing or awkward especially if i'm here i'll make sure everything (laughs) gets spoken about there's nothing off limits so if you've got something you really want you're challenged with and would love to hear about send us a message on instagram let us know and we'll uh, make sure that we cover that in an episode for you all righty this was fun i like this pumba says bye you can hear us snoring bye Bye. Wow, what an amazing episode. I hope you're feeling inspired after that conversation and empowered to make some changes and choices in your life. Now, don't forget to let us know if you loved this episode, please give us a five-star review. It really helps us know that we're on track with serving you guys and also majorly supports our channel. And you may even be in the running to be the shout out of the week. Every week on Instagram, we share one of our reviews with our network. So please be sure to leave your Instagram handle or your website in your review so we can share you with our amazing community. Community. If you head over to the link in our bio on Instagram at Babes Talking Business, you can get access to so many of our goodies, including the link to our bib shop. It's a crazy cute online merchandise shop that donates. of profits to a non-for-profit charity every month. So head over and check out who we're donating to this month and get yourself something super cute to wear. You can also find in our Instagram bio our books. You can get your hands on Life Above Zero by Lauren Kerr or The Four Year Career with Shani Thompson. Both super easy reads and incredible books to help you expand and evolve in even deeper ways. Now, don't forget to head over to the show notes. You can check out any of the links or the books or the references we mentioned in this episode. And before we go, we just want to say thanks so much for being here, for committing to being the best version of you and for showing up for you today. You are freaking amazing. Now, 
If you think that there is someone in your life that could really benefit from this episode, while you're feeling super inspired, please hit the share button and send them this episode right now. And the reason we're asking you to share the love is because you get what you give. And the more that you give and inspire, the more you get in return. Head over to www.babestalkingbusiness.com to check out all of our other podcasts. And we just want to say we are sending you so much love and we hope to see you soon.